Well, let's bring in members of Parliament now to talk about these latest developments. Marco Mendicino is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and a former Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Rachel Harder is the critic for the status of women for the official opposition Conservatives. And Alistair McGregor is the NDP agriculture critic. It's good to see you all. Thank you. Mr. Mendicino, let me start with you. Uh, uh, I want to go back to the interview I did with Jane Philpott at the top of our program. She told me that she hasn't ruled out a return to caucus if the speaker uh, happens to find that she was kicked out of caucus illegally. Uh, what's your response to that? Is there any way Liberals would be, would be willing or willingly take Jane Philpott back? Well, I go back to the original decision uh, to expel Ms. Philpott, which was a difficult decision and one that was on the base, made on the basis of a breakdown in trust, which is an essential uh, requirement for there to be a proper functioning team. And we place a lot of uh, value in having that trust among our colleagues so that we can have good candid conversations within Cognis, caucus I'm sorry, um, and at the cabinet table. Um, and so, you know, we are where we are on that. I, we need to continue to be focused on delivering for Canadians on a whole array of other priorities, which, which we're right. obviously interested in doing, but I know that the opposition uh, want to keep, you know, pivoting back to this issue. But, I mean, is she, in your view, would she be welcome in caucus or not? I mean, if, she, if, she, if there was a, I suppose if there was a legal way for her to return to caucus uh, because the, the Speaker were to find that the process wasn't done properly, uh, what would Liberals do? Well, we took a decision at the commencement of the session to opt out of uh, Mr. Chong's private member's bill. Um, well, that's the whole then, dispute, right? And, it's it's but whether the you went about this, the process properly right. of opting out. Right. But and whether so, you carried out the so necessary the first, recorded votes. In the first instance, we opted out. We did so in accordance uh, uh, with, with our own internal processes. And most importantly, at the crux of, or the heart of the matter, was a consultation which the Prime Minister engaged in with our caucus. It was extensive, and that the overwhelming consensus of the, of, of the caucus was that uh, Ms. Philpott and Ms. Wilson-Raybould should be expelled because of the breakdown in trust. And now we are focused on delivering for oh, Canadians. Oh, all right, Rachel Harder, uh, I guess some people would wonder why, why would Jane Philpott want to go back to the the caucus given everything that's happened what are your thoughts well i just want to point out a really key phrase that was just used here uh within our own internal process. Now, this, this actually points to something that's really foundational within the Liberal mentality, and that is there's one process for the Liberals, and then there's one process for everyone else. There's one law for the Liberals, and there's one law for everybody else. And somehow they're higher than the law that all other Canadians need to abide by. They come up with their own processes. It's, it's wrong. It's absolutely fundamentally wrong, and it's actually a slap in the face to our justice system. So the fact that Jody Wilson Raybould and Jane Philpott have both been strong women who have stood up to the Prime Minister, who have stood for justice, who have stood for uh, ethics and morality, who have been women of principle, that should be commended. All right, Mr. Greer, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I find it interesting that uh, Marco says that the opposition is just focusing on this issue to the detriment of everything else. I think if you will review the tapes from question period, uh, you'll see that our leader, Jagmeet Singh, is able to ch walk and chew gum at the same time. We have been asking about climate change. We've been asking about pharmacare and housing. But at the same time, as opposition, we are not going to let the government off the hook. We're not going to let them normalize this total breach of the rule of law where they're trying to say it's actually okay to interfere with the independence of the prosecutorial system. We are not going to say that's okay because in a democracy, we depend on the healthy functioning of the rule of law. We have to ensure that our prosecutors are never influenced by political considerations or the national interest. It's in the very law that the Liberals themselves snuck in through an omnibus bill last year. Mr. Mendicino, uh, uh, Andrew Scheer's not backing away on this. He's doubling down in fact, repeating his allegedly defamatory comments about the Prime Minister outside the House of Commons today, where he doesn't enjoy parliamentary immunity. Um, and you're a lawyer. Is, is the threat of a lawsuit from the Prime Minister serious or not here? Well, not only am I a lawyer, I'm a former federal prosecutor, and I take umbrage at the statements made uh, by my colleagues with regards to the value that our government places on the independence of the judiciary and the public prosecution service. And having worked on the front lines of the criminal justice system, I know that those are foundational values uh, which we stand for, and that runs through all of our work when it comes to the administration of justice. And with regards uh, to Mr. Scheer's decision to double down on defamation, I think it's highly regrettable. Uh, he seems to be uh, wanting to repeat statements, accusing the government of breaking criminal 
law. Uh, he cannot avail himself of any defense that it's true. Uh, he doesn't have any evidence to prove that accusation, and it's certainly not within the boundaries of the criminal uh, of what is fair commentary and what is fair public debate. So, if you so want to, if you want to show, minister? if you want to show uh, respect for the administration of justice, you should show respect for decisions which have um, admonished and indeed uh, required some acknowledgement by those who defame uh, public fi figures, and that's exactly what Mr. Shear is doing. Would your not advice exactly to the prime, would your to the prime minister? Would your advice to the prime minister be to go ahead and sue him? Well, that'll be a decision that's taken by uh, uh, the Prime Minister. My advice to Mr. Scheer would be to retract those statements. He's deleted tweets, uh, Peter. Um, he's deleted those tweets because I think, in all likelihood, uh, somebody offered him some sober reflection to, to you know, really reconsider whether or not making some of those highly inflammatory statements. He just he, uh, made, he made them all again today outside the house, right, at, right, right where you're sitting. Well, if so, and I haven't seen them, but yeah, if so, he, I he think He repeated that's, them all and said that he's going to repeat them again and he's not backing down. Like, well, if so, I think that, again, that's highly regrettable okay. and it's reckless. And more importantly, why isn't he denouncing uh, the, the existence of white supremacy? Why is it that Mr. Scheer seems to okay. be so reluctant to denounce white supremacy and a right-wing extremist movement. He, you know, he, okay, he's, hey, he's prepared I'll, to defame Mr. Rachel Baines. Harder, let, he, Rachel he, Harder, seems he's clear at this point. He just won't retract. Let, okay, it makes no sense. Rachel Harder, it seems clear at this point the Prime Minister isn't likely to proceed with a lawsuit. So where does that leave us? So how long does Mr. Scheer go on doing this uh, if there's not going to be a, a legal repercussion? Yeah, look, I, I think, to your point, Andrew Scheer has called the Prime Minister on his bluff. The Prime Minister came out with arms swinging, uh, issued a letter from his lawyer saying that he was going to take Andrew Scheer to court. Um, look, the leader of our party, Mr. Scheer, is more than happy to go to court. Uh, certainly within that room, within a courtroom, before a judge, uh, there is accountability, whereas in the House of Commons there is not. And so right now, uh, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau can get away with saying all sorts of things that he would not get away with in a court of law. And so we invite him, by all means, please bring the case forward. Mr. Mr. McGregor, a final word to you here. Is, is all of this advancing uh, the story here, advancing uh, whether Canadians are learning more about this or not? Uh, we have what now appears to be this uh, a, a trading of... Uh, uh, well, back and forth on the legal front here, and it doesn't seem to be moving any forward. Where does that leave us? Well, I think, you know, for the Liberals who wanted to put this story away, to send a, a letter, a lawsuit letter, you, you know, it's now in the news cycle for another week. So tactically <laughs> speaking, I don't know who's running the PMO right now. And I just wish Mr. Menachino would spare us the manufactured outrage over Liberals supporting the rule of law and prosecutorial independence. Mm -hmm. This from a government that has consistently changed its story in response to emerging facts, yes. where there's a, a evidence of a four-month sustained campaign to pressure the Attorney General to overrule rule the independence of the director of public prosecutions. I'm sorry, but the Canadians I speak to in my riding and across the country, they've made their minds up. They know the Liberals are wrong on this issue despite any kind of excuse they try to come up with to salvage their sordid right. reputation on this affair. Our time, our, time, our, our, our time was short tonight, but our time was short tonight, but I thank you for uh, giving us uh, the time that we do have. Uh, thank you all. Thank Thanks, you, Peter. Thank you.